behavior tomorrow. Use the time wisely. I'm not trying to waste your time. I'm not going to give you a stupid assignment. I am going to post a video uh, of me doing the map last year so you could do the map with a video or you can just do it off of the paper. I don't care. Everyone good to go? Perfect. All right, here we go. So India. So the Gupta is going to fall. Who can raise your hand and tell me who is the founder of the Gupta? What do we got? Garrett. Sandra Gupta, yes. So Sandra Gupta's empire, obviously it's not going to be him, uh, but the Gupta are going to fall to the White Huns. You guys remember the White Huns, you always mention the White Huns. Uh, so it's going to fall to the White Huns. What happens in India after an empire rises and then collapses? Lily? It collapses into a bunch of tiny kingdoms. Yeah, it collapses into a bunch of tiny kingdoms every single time. So this, after the Gupta, is going to be the same damn thing. So it rises, the Gupta rise. And when they shatter, it creates chaos, okay? So, northern India is going to have the biggest problem because we're going to have the Abbasid Empire has reached all the way over into India. The Abbasid Empire is carrying what religion with them, ladies and gentlemen? Islam. So, we're going to start having the encroachment of Islam into India. Okay, so, when we rise into an empire and we collapse into kingdoms, one of these kingdoms is going to be Harsha's kingdom. Now, Harsha's kingdom is a big deal for the fact it's odd. That's it. It's weird. So, Harsha is a really cool guy who's Buddhist, but he's super tolerant, and he unites northern India. He's going to be the first person to unify northern India for the next, like, four, uh, until period five. Like, he's a big deal for that. He's super cool, writes three plays that are apparently still popular in India. Apparently, I don't know. And um, eventually he does get assassinated, but he's beloved by his people. The reason why it's weird is he unifies northern India, but no one else unifies northern India. It's literally him. So Harsha unifies northern kingdom. He's Buddhist, but religiously tolerant. And he gets assassinated and dies. So it's like a blip on the map. Would we agree? The reason why it's a big deal is because he's the first one to do it. All right, we good? Cool. Are you right, Henry? What do you need? You don't need that much. You don't need to write everything, my darling. You don't. You don't. You're going to die if you try writing everything. Will you? Ex are you experiencing death? Trying to get everything? Yeah, I don't. Okay, so... What you need to know is that eventually Islam is going to be infringing on India. Now, stop. What religion is the most popular religion traded along the Silk Road in period two? What do you got, Catherine? Buddhism. Buddhism. We're now in period three. What religion do you think is going to be the most popular religion spread along the Silk Road? Jackson. Islam. Islam. You need to understand Islam, I'd write it down. Islam becomes the most popular religion on the Silk Road. Stop looking, write that down. Okay, so Islam becomes the most popular religion on the trade routes. Okay, so with that being said, where does the Silk Road, what major modern countries is the Silk Road in? Hello, what major, we looked at it today on a map, yes. China and India. So where is Islam going to immediately? China and India. Now, does China have a lot going on, correct? China today does not have a lot of Muslims, okay? Buddhism and Confucianism, okay? What is it called when we blend the two? Neo-Confucianism Neo is going to be super, super popular, and they're super happy with it, so they leave it alone, okay? India is going to have a huge Muslim population. Now... I want you to see the big connection, so please listen. Okay? India has a huge Muslim population. When India becomes an independent country after the British invasion in 1947, a country, a part of India, breaks off and creates its own country. What is the name of that country that used to be a part of India that is now broken off? And Pakistan. Pakistan is a Muslim country. Okay? It used to be part of India. They broke off. All the, most of the Muslims out of India then migrated north into India. I would write down on your sheet right now, northern India will be Muslim-dominated. Where is Pakistan today? 
Northern India, absolutely. So Northern India is going to be dominated by Muslims. Who can raise your hand and tell me what religion is the most popular in Southern India? Think about Southern India. Henry, Hinduism. Okay, who's sprinkled intermediately throughout? What religion is sprinkled intermediately throughout? Buddhism. Buddhism. That's it. So your two major religions in India, forever and always, forever and always, including today in 2017, northern India is going to be Muslim. Muslim. Southern India is going to be Hindu. Hindu. From here on out. If someone tells you they're from southern India, what religion are they? Hindu. Hindu. If they're from northern India, they're probably? Muslim. There you go. Do we see how this is going to work for the rest of your lives? It's good to come in it now. All right. So we know that the Silk Road is carrying in Islam from the Arabs, correct? So with that being said, it's going to start there pretty organically. However, a guy named Mahadav Gandhi is going to light this massive fire and cause a ton of conflict. You need to know his name. You need to put a star, a box, whatever you need to do to know his name. On your AP exam on May 11th, there will be an essay on Islam. He is the perfect piece of evidence. Ladies and gentlemen, on week 13, when we start our writing week again, we will be writing his name in order to support evidence. He is a very, very, very big name. And why is he a big name? First of all, he's a Turk. He leads raiding parties into India, and he starts taking gold, jewels, whatever he can out of Buddhist uh, temples, then he burns down the Buddhist temples and then builds a mosque on top of it. A mosque is a religious building, a uh, place of worship for Muslims. Okay? Now, why is he just building mosques and leaving? What, what isn't he doing that's kind of strange? What isn't he doing? What can't he do? Jackson? He's not force converting. Why is he not force converting, Jackson? Uh, because it's not something that they do in their Yes, it is outright forbidden. But do you think Muhammad wanted you to raid another country, burn down their religious sites, and put a mosque? If you were an Indian and you were just doing living life, and your major temple with all of your money, your wealth, everything just got burned down. Are you going to be welcoming to Islam or are you going to hate it? Hate it. Today in India, Muslims and uh, Hindus hate each other. It starts with Mahat of Gandhi. Apparently, it's still a huge scandal in India today for a Muslim man or woman to marry a Hindu man or woman. It's a huge deal and it's still pretty rare. Is that crazy? And it all comes back to this guy. What he did is come in, he raided, burned down, stole all the stuff, burned it down, and put in all of this, uh, put in a mosque. Yes? Isn't that what Muhammad did in Mecca? Okay, he's commanded by God. This guy just did it for green. You know what I mean? If God came down and said, Jackson, I need you to take over Plant High School, what would you do? Very good. There you go. God commands it, correct? You would say, God wills it. That's like my favorite line from the crusade. I feel like you can justify anything. God wills it. Like, I even use that line with McCray when I want pizza. Because <laughs> McCray, my husband, is like healthy. It's so annoying. Anyway, so I love junk food with a passion. And so I've used the line, well, God commands it or God wills it. And he just like rolls his eyes. But I get what I want, so do I learn a lesson? No. Sultanate of Delhi is a big thing. Sultanate of Delhi is the first Muslim empire in India. Okay? So they take over the territory that Mahatma Gandhi burned down, and they take over and say, mine. Okay? Mahatma Gandhi does not start the Sultanate of Delhi, but we have already the footprint of Mahatma Gandhi. These people take over it. Do you think they're warmly received in India? No, of course not. They're not really well liked. They're super disorganized. Um, so much so that no one likes them that 19 out of 35 sultans are murdered. 
Not popular. What do you got, Anne? Yeah. Anytime you see a sultanate, they're always Muslim. So they are the first Muslim empire in India. Um, are they going to be in the north or the south? North. North, because why? Muslim. They're Muslims, they're in the north. Okay, so they're going to be in the northern part of, Mus of Muslims. They're going to be in the northern part of India. They're not going to be very popular because they're very disorganized and everyone has a bad taste in their mouth from Mahat of Gandhi. What? Why do they they last a long time because they merely just survive. They're just kind of kicking it. And the reason is, is that they are somewhat supported by other people. Now, stop, listen. I'm trying to save you time. Do you not worry about the cola? They're trading. Cool. Uh, Kingdom of V, I'm not even going to try. How do you say it, do you know? Okay. Kingdom of V, you need to know them. And all you need to know is that they are were allies with the Sultanate of Delhi, but then turn on them. BJ Anagar. The V people. Kingdom of V. Yeah, BJ. Sure. Okay, so the only thing you need to know about the Kingdom of V is that they were friendly with the Sultanate of Delhi, but then they eventually turned. That's it. He's a popular first name now. Really? There you go. They're friendly with the Sultanate of Delhi. Eventually they turn on them. Up. Why? Because uh, they're jerks. The Sultanate of Delhi are just jerks. So then the Kingdom of V people are they're like, to turn oh, they're like, jerks. oh my god, so these people are like, this seems like a new thing, let's try this new thing out. So they're like, hey, Sultanate of Delhi, let's be besties. And the Sultanate of Delhi's like, sure. And then the Sultanate of Delhi steals the girlfriend, you know, does all this crazy, shady stuff, and they're like, screw you, Sultanate of Delhi. I don't know what's going to happen, but essentially, does that work for you? Cool. Alright. Yeah, they were friends, now they're not friends. Now they just talk crap about each other. It's pretty great. Alright. Monsoon winds, you do need to know the direction of your monsoon winds, ladies and gentlemen. Spring and summer, it goes wind from the southwest, fall, winter, northeast. You also need to know that India is going to be building reservoirs. These reservoirs are still used even now in 2017, except this year was one of the worst droughts in history of India. So much so that all of the reservoirs were completely depleted and hundreds of thousands of people died in India today. Um, and most of these reservoirs were built during period three. So you need to know your monsoon winds, the direction, and you need to know they're building reservoirs and canals uh, in order to avoid dry season. Can I change it? I am so achy today. It's going to be a long day. Too. I slept on? I slept on a couch. Huh? Well, no, the problem is McCray got in last night, like 11 o'clock from Chicago, and he hasn't been home since Sunday, Sunday morning. So felt kind of rude to say, to the couch. So I went to the couch. All right, here we go. So population growth of India, that's fine. OK, you need to understand. Stop and look at me for two seconds. It'll make sense. OK, northern India has a lot going on with this whole new Muslim thing, correct? OK, we have the Sultanate of Delhi, which no one likes. OK, and that's kicking it up there. No one really likes it. Southern India doesn't change because they're what? Hindus. It's very consistent. Everyone's the same. The leadership has been there for um, two periods at this point. So southern India is booming with money. That's what you need to know. Trade booms in South India because of political stability. Trade booms in South India because of political stability. Northern India is a hot mess. Okay? Because this whole new Muslim thing, people are having issues. So if you're a trader from Africa and you're trying to buy some pepper, some cinnamon, and some cotton, are you going to go to northern India or are you going to go to southern India? Southern. You're going to go to southern India because the prices are the same, you know the people, everyone's friendly, everyone's happy. Up north, everyone's cranky. They're all stressed, man. I don't know if that's really true, but we're doing it. Uh, temples become the center of life in India. Temples are the center of life, both Buddhist and Hindu temples. So temples become the center of life, education, banking, everything. 
all money is going through the temples. That's a big deal. Because if all money is running through the temples, do you think there's going to be regulations here coming? Yes. yes, ladies and gentlemen. Wherever the money is is where the government focuses, correct? Yeah. Okay, like no one really cares about education because we don't cost that much of the budget, correct? We don't really make that much money off the budget. Everyone cares about what's happening with the military, correct? We spend a lot of money on the military. Everyone's looking at that. Hence why people were... Uh, Trump said on Tuesday, for instance, that Puerto Rico has hurt the budget. Yes? You, you didn't hear those comments. What are you people doing? Yeah, it wasn't like Katrina. Which is, a thousand people plus died in Katrina, so like I, I, I kind of know where it's going on that. Anyway, uh, one of the things that they mentioned is that Puerto Rico is in debt, $70 billion. Yes, which is part of the reason of the budget thing. Um, the U.S. military budget is $700 billion. So the whole budget comes into place. So people care more about the military than they do about principalities because that's where the money is, correct? The United States has a lot of regulation on our military because that's where the money is. Wherever the money is, that's where government follows. All right, trade. Oh, we have new technology for trade, and they're called Dows and Jukes. Dows are Indian shit. Uh, Dows are uh, Arab ships, and jukes are Chinese ones. The reason why they're a new technology is because they're bigger. Why would bigger ships matter, Henry? More supplies to trade. More things to trade. Okay, we have emporias now. Okay, emporias are warehouses for trade. They're major warehouses. Now, my husband's family is from Emporia, Virginia. By the way, their claim to fame is that they have two stoplights and a massive gas station in Emporia, Virginia. The reason why Emporia is called Emporia is because it had one of the largest warehouses in the country in the 1800s. Hence why it's called Emporia, Virginia. That's where all of your tobacco would go and wait to be distributed wherever it was going, is Emporia, Virginia. That's their big claim to fame. Isn't that fun? So Emporias are warehouses, and that is technology. Isn't that weird? Things we take for granted are technology. All right, to the boards, my darlings, my dears, my delights. All right, here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what part of India is Muslim base. Let's go. Nice. Come on, I got three, four, five. What is it, Evelyn? Northern India. What religion is the most popular in southern India? Why are you writing southern India when I had it in the question? What religion is the most popular in southern India? Benji. Hinduism. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who raids Buddhist temples burns them down, and builds mosques on top of it. You need his full name because we're going to come across another Mahat. So we need the full name, ladies and gentlemen, because it's that big of a deal. And we have two. Rebecca, who is it? <coughs> Sounds good to me. On your whiteboard, please tell me what year did Muhammad die? Don't look at me like that, Julia. Don't look at me like that, Julia. What is it, Julia? 632. 632. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the two new ships we have floating around? Period three. And let's go. Hi, where's your board? Hi, sweetie. You're not special. You're not better or worse than anyone in the room. Cool. Get up. Now you're wasting my time again. What is it? Gabby. Dows and Jukes. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the most popular religion on the Silk Road, period two. Good. Period two. I've got so many wrong answers because you weren't paying attention to periodization. What is it, Georgia? Buddhism. What is the most popular religion on the Silk Road? Four, period three, and here on ever. What is it, Tanner? Islam. Islam. Oh, by the way, you pissed me off yesterday. 
Do not put X's on your test. You bubble. It's so annoying. Real life struggle. Miss okay. Wakefield makes it for X's. Oh, I hate that crap. I, I don't know why. Like and then she marks the ones that are right. right and I'll be happy to show you, Tanner, why I hate it because of how I grade. I'll be happy to. And you're going to receive a hateful note on your test. You know, I never have to grade again. What? Grade test. Oh, did you do the clicker thing? Oh, I hate that crap. So awesome. No, then how would I do their names? All right. Put it on a sheet of paper and put it on. Oh, no. Then you're done. still wasting paper. Sorry. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the first go uh, Muslim government in India? What is the name of the first Muslim government in India? They're not really well liked because they're a bunch of jerks. What is it, Kiara? There you go. On your whiteboard, who is the only friend of the Sultanate of Delhi until that friend is like, oh, hell no. What is that, Camden? The kingdom of the kingdom of the. On your whiteboard. Nope, I'm done. All right, here we go. All right, kingdom of Axum. AP loves weird things. Kingdom of Axum is one of them. Kingdom of Axum is in Africa. It's on the Indian Ocean Basin. So you need to know that the kingdom of Axum is in, in Africa on the Indian Ocean coast. It's modern day Ethiopia, by the way. <clears throat> anyway, so the only thing, before you get crazy here writing things down, ladies and gentlemen, there's like two things you need to know about them. A, they are the only part of Africa that chooses to be Christian without any white people telling them about it. Isn't that cool? Africa has a lot of Christians today, but a lot of that is due to imperialism. The Kingdom of Aksum, they were like all about it real quick, and that's really cool. So the Kingdom of Aksum, they're Christians, so that makes them really weird. They also build an obelisk, and that is really, really unique. Uh, I think two or three years ago, they had a picture of it, and you had to write about it. So how did they get all their money to build the obelisk? What do you think they were doing if they were along the Indian Ocean Basin? Trade. Trade. What is a unique factor about the kingdom of Axum? They're Christian. They're Christian. That's the unique fact, people. We haven't talked about any Christians except outside Europe. They are like one of the very few. Oh, the obelisk, they have two. This one here is uh, the big one, and then they built this one later. But do you think they're wealthy or not wealthy? Well, they're incredibly wealthy, and we'll come back to them. Yes. What do you know? It's like a shape. It's like a Washington one. That pyramid. It's like a it's Egyptian. It's like the Washington monument. Yeah. Yeah. It's a vertical. It's a square vertical pose of the pyramid. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Uh, cast system, don't write anything. I'm going to tell you what you need, and we're going to skip through what we don't. Okay, I think we can all understand the caste system is still fully going, correct? Where is the caste system in India the most powerful? Where is it, Abby? South. Southern India. Northern India obviously has a ton of Muslim influence. The caste system starts getting weaker there. But essentially, it's still happening, of course. Uh, Buddhism is going to be in decline. Makes a lot of sense, right? I would write Buddhism starts to decline due to who can tell me why does Buddhism start to decline in India? Think about it. Think about it. Georgia. Okay, they're going to cut them off here in a little bit, but they haven't cut them off yet. What's the problem, Will? Why are they losing? Uh, they, that one guy, like, burned their... Yes! All of them in the north have been burned down. And people are like, oh, damn it, do we really want to rebuild? Okay? And if you believe in Buddhism and you have your temple burned down, do you think that means like the world is right and everything is good or you're going to kind of quit your religion? Yes, absolutely. I think at some point like you're just like, ah, screw it, who cares? Right? Like all of your wealth, your entire like little village is burned down, you'd be like, ah, screw it. Okay, Hinduism. Um, Hinduism, we started having devotional cults and all that stuff. You do need to know this guy. I don't even ask. I don't even know. Okay, you do need to know this guy, and the only thing you need to know is that he starts modern Hinduism. Huh? Wrong. Ramanuja. Ramanuja. There you go. He starts modern Hinduism, and he uses devotional cults. I would write Ramanuja, 
He starts modern Hinduism with devotional cults. That's what you need to know about him, and that's it. I am so tired. Are you going to the game tonight? Is that why you're wearing that yeah. jersey? Are you excited? I am. I'm excited too. Thanks for asking. There's going to be so many Patriots fans. Of course. So we know what winning feels like. Oh, I'm cheating. Did you guys just How about Chiefs? Yeah, both are in We're not sure to All right, here we go. So conversion is on Sabbath. Listen. Who is more in India? What type of Hindus are more likely to convert to Islam? The high or the low? low. low. Why, Ali, why low caste people? Yes, yes. Do you want to be seen as terrible and awful just because of your birth? No. So Islam allows you to escape it. Makes sense. So don't write it down, correct? Like it makes sense. Sufis, these are the people who believe in magic. Do you believe in magic? That was it. Yeah. They keep coming up. True, no true. We keep seeing Sufis. Yeah, we see them all the time. All right, the Bakai movement you definitely need to write down. So the Bakai movement is a blending of Hinduism and Islam, and it's started by Guru Kabir. Now, the Bakai movement is the first attempt and it fails. So you need to write three things about the Bakai movement. Blends Buddhism and Hinduism. Started by Guru Kabir and fails. Eventually, a religion is going to start. Perfect syncretism. Does anyone know what modern day religion exists today? That blends Hinduism and Buddhism? Lily? Um, oh, no, I don't know. What? Um, the PowerPoint says Hinduism and Islam. Yeah. You said Hinduism and Buddhism. Oh, my God. I meant Islam. I meant Islam. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much, Lily. What is it? What? Hinduism and Islam. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Lily, for pointing that out. I'm sorry. I'm on, like, less than four hours of sleep. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Okay. So, you need to know that it is Hinduism and Islam. Because I'm an idiot, so make sure you got it right. You need to know Guru Bakar is the dude behind it, and it fails. There is a modern-day religion, which is the fourth most popular religion in the world, ladies and gentlemen. And no one knows what it's called. It starts with an S. Oh, so, so all of you are saying... Scientology. No, my God, they believe in aliens in your body. No. <laughs> Sikhism. Sikhism. Have you ever seen no. someone yeah. wear like a wrap around their head, men? Yeah. Yeah, yeah those are Sikhs. That's Sikhs is the fourth largest religion in the world. We have a U.S. senator here in the United States who's a Sikh. First one ever got elected on um, the last round for senators. And someone showed up at their town hall meeting like a month ago and was screaming um, ISIS stuff at him. Wait, what? What, what is the difference between a Sikh and ISIS? So much. So much. So much. So, like, people there, there's a hilarious, hilarious way. It was some, like, white lady was screaming at him, like, you're a terrorist, you're a terrorist. <laughs> And so the guy spent half of his town hall explaining the difference between Islam and ISIS, which I think we can all agree here is pretty damn huge, right? Yeah. Just like if you're a Christian, you're not the same as the KKK, right? Okay, so big difference there. And then he had to explain how Sikhism is the blending of Hinduism and Islam. And up in Massachusetts, we have a ton of Sikhs, and I don't know why. I was friends... Uh, his name's John Gabor, and he was a Sikh. And it's really cool. They wear these, like, turban kind of things. They're head wraps. Men wear them. Women, the girls can wear their hair down and all that stuff. It's totally fine. But men aren't allowed to cut their hair. Oh, it's cultural, people. It's cultural. Anyway, so inside the hair wrap is all of his hair for his whole, like, it's all of his hair. Their beards, too? No. You don't have to have a beard. Some choose to, some don't. But you don't have to have a beard. What? So they never cut their hair in the whole line. Never cut their hair. 
I don't know, ladies, I think we should be celebrating. This is a fascination with men in their hair instead of women in their hair. So can we talk about equality for a second? At least the yes. woman gets to cut their hair, though. Before does it go down? It gets tied up. So it's constantly tied up since, like, the age of eight and stuff. So if you ever see someone... Huh? What is it called? I mean, like, when I tie my hair up, like, it pulls my head down. I don't know, man. Ask a Sikh on the street. I don't know. <laughs> what do you got? This may be stupid, but isn't that like um, Aladdin? Like how they have the head wraps? Aladdin had like a little cup thing. No, but like his dad had the head wraps. Yeah, he had head wraps. I'm going to have to watch it this weekend. I thought Aladdin had the head wraps. Yeah, he did, yeah. Oh, well, he had the Sultan hat. Oh, my God. No, we're not doing, we're not trying to historically find value in Aladdin at the moment. Yes. Huh? Yeah. It's like a religion thing. Just like in India, um, uh, people who follow the devotion of uh, Shiva, you don't, women don't cut their hair except for, t like, twice in their life as, like, a clearing thing. That's where you get all your weaves from. Ladies and gentlemen, like you've heard of weaves, yes? Women who put like layers of a hair, hair in their hair that's not theirs, yes? Most of it's black hair. The reason is, is because people who are devoted to Shiva, what they do to show their devotion is they cut their hair. So people, all of these temples in India that are devoted to Shiva are making millions upon millions upon millions of dollars by collecting all the hair and then selling it to Americans. <laughs> So, using so when you see wigs that are made out of natural hair, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think that hair comes from? Shiva. Shiva, devotees, typically. All right, we're off track here. We have, we have gone off. No. Yeah, some of you can spend, like, crazy money. Do you think Kylie Jenner puts fake hair in her hair? No. She has, like, it's not only wants someone else's hair. Huh? I'd rather have face. Yeah, but, okay. Off topic. Could not get further. Guys, think about it. Ladies, if you're gonna... If you're gonna curl your hair and do all that stuff, if you're using, like, plastic hair, it doesn't hold and it burns, and it smells like burnt, like plastic. So if you use natural hair, it's gonna hold the curl. You can do all the natural product stuff to it, and it looks better because it's not, like, plastic. It's so weird. Like, yeah, but they I'm not arguing right? that. I mean, <laughs> Wait, they, they clean, clean it, right? Everything. Yes, they clean it. Well, I don't know. I yeah, don't do like, this on the daily. Awesome. We're moving on. We're moving on. There is a bunch of Netflix stuff about the origin of hair. Oh, watch, uh, no, Rock, Rock. Chris Rock does, um, the good hair. It's on, uh, it's really funny. His daughter comes home from school one day, and he's like, Dad, I wish I had the good hair. And he's like, what? Because she was like eight years old. Uh, and so he does this whole thing trying to figure out like where this whole root of um, African Americans, how they have this bad hair thing. Like, but good. We've all heard Becky in the good hair. Beyonce. Oh, my God. We're so off track. We're going on. <laughs> I just can't. Watch it. It's good. Okay, stop for two seconds. Trade carries Islam. Yes? Trade is carrying to Southeast Asia. So what religion is going to Southeast Asia? Islam. Okay, then we don't need to talk about it. Perfect. Islam is being traded in Southeast Asia. What a surprise. Done. Cool. Can we talk about Becky? No. Becky was, is cheating with Jay-Z on Beyonce, and it's been happening for years. It's fine. Wait, why would... Jay-Z's cheating on <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Europe. Are you saying it's a lie to sell records? She made it a lie. And that's fine. I don't believe it. Do you hear her heartbreak? Do you hear her heartbreak in sandcastles? Do you hear the millions of dollars off that? Oh, that's true. so simple. I love it. Wait, what are we saying? What are you trying to say? People make lies up to make music money? I just can't imagine. No. Yes, they are. All right. Medieval Christian M. So we're in Europe, by the way. I would write Europe at the top of your page just so you know we've switched. I hope you enjoyed India. Okay. All right, cool. All right. So, who can raise your hand and tell me when the Roman Empire collapsed? Well, 410. 410. 
the correct answer, but wrong because it's from you and you're wearing that shirt. Just kidding. 410. Rome collapses for the first time. 432. Uh, the first Germanic emperor, emperor is on the throne. Okay? So Rome falls to all the barbarians. All that stuff is occurring. Okay? You need to write down the Byzantine Empire. Okay? You need to write formally what part of the Roman Empire? Constantinople. That's the city in it. Eastern. You need to write Byzantine Empire, former Eastern. And you need to write it's the wealthiest. Why is it the wealthiest? You can raise your hand and tell me why it's the wealthiest. Henry, you've been on it all day today, man. I appreciate it. What's going on? Why is it the wealthiest? Trade. Trade. Absolutely. It is the capital, world capital of trade. Germanic states is the former what part of the Roman? Western. Western. One Z. The other one has to be West. It makes a lot of sense. Okay? They are playing with sticks. You don't have to write that. But know that nothing is going on in Europe. They're literally plowing fields. That's all they're doing. Then all right. Huh? Then why do we, like, mention them? Because it's you kind of got to know they're playing with sticks. All right. So Christianity is going to be everywhere in Europe. It's the, most high, it's the highest density of Christians in the world. Um, and so when we think about the Middle East today, we kind of think of, like, why the hell are people fighting over religion, correct? Like, why are they killing each other over it? Uh, that's how the Muslims used to look at Western Europe. They used to be like, what the hell is happening over there? They're dirty, they're disgusting, they have no education, and they're just killing each other. That's what's happening in Western Europe. And in, in uh, the Middle East, you have universities, you have the Dar al-Islam, you have clean streets, you have surgery, you have all this research and education. So it's the complete opposite of what we think of today, which I find so fascinating. So the first major, so you're going to write Byzantine Empire. You are going to write the first Christian government. Now the Roman converts and makes Christianity the official religion of Rome for the last 30 years of its existence. However, everything about the Roman Empire is not based on Christianity. Would we agree? Everything about the Byzantine Empire is supporting what religion? Christianity. That makes them the first Christian Empire. All of your other Western empires are going to be kind of mimicking the Byzantine, even though they keep saying Roman, Roman, Roman. They're actually doing Byzantine things. Okay. They're going to have the capital of Byzantium, which is really what city, you think? Constantinople. There you go. So they rename it. They call it Byzantium. With that being said, um, we'll get to the Turks because we'll get there. All right. So you need to know that the government structure is called that. Okay? It is a Roman-based style with an emperor with absolute power. It's a Roman, uh, it's a Roman Empire style government with an emperor on top and it's all Christian all the time. So it's pretty cool and they have absolute rule. Who can tell me what absolute rule is? Jackson. Yes. So if I said tomorrow Everyone needs to wear a Patriots jersey to school. And every time I walk in the room, everyone has to cheer, Go Pats! Okay? What would be, if you don't do it, I murder you in front of everyone and I spill your blood everywhere. Worth it? Okay? That's absolute rule. Whatever the leader wants is what happens and the consequences is death very publicly in order to shame other people from challenging your rule. It's a very effective way of ruling. Would you agree? Okay. If I was going to be a root... Oh, CVS is calling me. <laughs> I'm just so popular. I'm so you sorry, guys. Yes. I know. I haven't picked up my prescription wow. yet. I know. I know. You're responsible. I know. I'm a terrible girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that being... Oh. <laughs> what? Bye. I'm glad we ended on CVS, though. I had a kid take a test in my classroom yesterday. I had what? I had a kid take a test in my classroom yesterday. Yeah? Just how long it took me to uh, like get that test back. How? 15 minutes. Why? Called um, called the office gave the names of the kids who sat at the table, and they rounded them all up and like how many kids took the test in like 15 minutes. Someone stole a test? No, she accidentally took it. But 
the boundary she came she came back to my room like just like sobbing and shaking. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Why did you think she was like doing that until I saw I it? thought so. I thought they potentially took it so they could share it because I had two more periods to go. I freaked out. Oh my like, gosh. I was so angry. People think I've got problems. <laughs> <laughs>